All right, Shalom Rastafari. This would probably be the part. It was probably for part four, three or four. Um, we have a short part. You could talk for that, but um, you know, be it as it may, you can download them, put them together, put the series, the mini series together. Those brothers and sisters who are who are fellowshipping or co-partnering with the society, feel free to put these lessons and lectures and teachings together and even with other matters out there that are relative to it and distribute it, circulate it to those willing to learn. You understand this is part of the ministry, this is part of the fellowship work for those who are able to do it, but don't feel under any sort of obligation or, you know, do it do it in a cheerful and a willing spirit of the King of Kings and His Christ. So what we're going to continue on right now, we're in First Corinthians chapter 14. And basically speaking to church and the churchical, um, the churchical order, um, the churchical order, uh, in a, um, what is it, uh, the Schofield, is it my Schofield, uh, Leila, oh, yes, Miss Hannah, mm. now we're using the online resources and we're in the Torah portion, um, Ve'et uh, Hanan or Lemenahu, and I pleaded and I beseeched, or you could say, and I begged. You understand? Know like in some of the Kedah say concerning Kedistin, because uh, Mariam it says, Lemenyuling. It's often translated as pray for me, but it's not really pray. Um, it's, it's, it's a sense of prayer, of what's done in prayer. But it is not actually prayer in that sense. It is beseech. That literally means begging. You know, tend to beg. He said, I'm begging you. You know, I'm begging you. In that sort of sense is how it's used. So we're in the 45th um, um, weekly Torah portion of the Orit, the Orit uh, Minbab. And as we mentioned already right here, we showed you this from the Sabbath house reading. This is the forty, the forty-fifth. Can you see that right there? The forty-fifth, right there. The forty-fifth, and it's le me ne hu. So you can practice even, even this here with your bamarinya. And we have the uh, transliteration here: le me ne. That apostrophe ne e schwa sound, schwa sound. Hu le me ne hu, le me ne hu, right? Le me ne hu, le me ne hu. So either we might write it like this, or it may be written like this in English, in Latin, actually. This is the Latin right here. This is the Amharic. Now, this is the Latin of the Hebrew, uh, va or ve et hanan or wa et hanan. This is a Torah portion, right, that we are reading and feeding on right now. But before we even get into uh, more of it, we actually went to the New Testament, the light of the New Testament, the light of the Gospel, the Wengel, to illuminate I and I on what the churchical and the Bible study, our gatherings, what is the spirit and the context of our gatherings according to the light of Yeshua, taking the veil. Remember, the Old Testament is shadow. The New Testament is substance. Just like if you see a shadow. And you can see what casts that shadow. The thing that casts the shadow is the substance. All right? Is the substance thereof. So we have right here the Torah portion. And in going through this, we thought that it would be best to give you a demonstration by even opening up the Tyler Selassie Amharic Bible, which is online. You can put in your Google or your search um, Haile Selassie Bible, those three words right there, and you should see it. You might have to download certain fonts to your computer, but it has English, the English instructions. The English instructions are there as well. So let's see if we can click on this right here again. Got a couple windows open. Hopefully nothing crashes on us, and we'll be able to at least get to this portion of our study for this 45th um um, Sabbath or Shabbat or Senbet, the Senbet Ken, right, where it says to remember the Sabbath. It's a memorial to remember the Sabbath to keep it set apart. So what we've learned also so far is the Machibah, the Machibah, the Machibah, which is society, right? 
Now, the translated says church, as we already pointed out in the previous portion, said church. But then when you start to study this word, right, and you start to study this word, you start to recognize that it means becoming one, being united, being unified, and also um, is the same etymologically as the word Hebrew, which means to cross over. It is said to mean to cross over. So when we become born again, in a sense, symbolically, we become Hebrews, in a sense. We, we cross from ignorance. You know, we were truly the inborn conception of Rastafari. We cross from ignorance, from darkness, to, to light, to the true light of Christ in his kingly character. So let's continue with 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if we will. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we was up to this point right here. We're speaking about tongues and language. And the Holy Spirit has put on our, our heart to, you know, speak and preach and, and proclaim some, some foundational words to help to inspire the brothers and sisters who sometimes ones might look at I and I or others or a native speaker over in Hark and say, wow, I, I won't be able to learn this. And, and that's the devil, that's Satan, that satanic mind. That you have to cast that away. And, but you have to know the scriptures that basically says, you understand, that, that gives us that encouragement where we ground and found I and I faith on. So here in verse 4 it says, He that speaketh in a and, and tongue, a listen, the brackets here, you, you'll find it italicized in the, um, in the Bible, especially in the Schofield Bible, you should find the, what's in brackets here on the blue letter, italicized in the italic, not Italian, but the italic words, right, the italicized words, and it's kind of the italicized words don't really exist, but are put in to try to give some context. So if you go to verse, um, if you go to verse 4, it, it, it's in italics. And just, you know how we like to prove and to demonstrate right here, right? If you go to verse 4, right? Let's see, where's verse 4 right, right here? Can we, can we, it's kind of close. Well, well, it's right here. It's kind of close right here with the computer and everything. So just go to verse 4, you'll see it italics. All right? See the italics, you know what I mean? Uh, most of y'all can pick up the food for yourself now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need one to move the food to your mouth. You know what I'm saying? You can pick up the food, you know? I mean, even a little child. We may be little children, but we can pick up the food for ourselves. If we're obedient children, you know what I'm saying? With disobedient children, well, there's a, there's a whole lesson. Just make it not a life lesson, right? Um, verse 5 says, I would that ye all spake with tongues. He wants us all, or uh, those who he spoke to in the church of uh, Corontos, like Toronto, right? Corontos. He wanted them all to speak with tongues. All to speak with... Now, what tongues were he speaking about? You have to remember they said that uh, she was spoke Galilean and Aramaic was being spoken and also Greek was being spoken at that time. Many of our people then, I was talking about the black um, Israelites as well as some of the righteous Gentiles and ones were also integrated to some extent. But that's not the, that's not the overstanding when we come to the higher heights, the higher heights. These are basic foundational things that we need to put in proper order. But we need to grow. Don't get stuck. You will stand on the hate that hate produced. All right? Don't be equal. Don't get even with the devil. Then you're a devil. You understand? So we have to recognize white supremacy, the whitewashing, all this confusion. But we have to continue to grow. So it says, but rather, he says, that ye all prophesy for greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues. Except he interpret. So it's important to interpret that the church may receive, that the mahuber may receive what? that it may receive edifying, edifying. You understand? And what is edifying? Building up. So that church may be built up. You know what I'm saying? Not broken down. People want to break you down. I'll break this down. Let me break this down. Everything they're breaking down. It's just destructive. That's what is it is. Where's the constructiveness? Mm -hmm. Education is the key, and His Majesty says that language is the key of culture. So not only are we, are we speaking to God, but we are speaking to God and we're learning God's culture 
in learning God's language. You understand the, 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 the pure language of the King of Kings and his Christ. He says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, rather that ye are able to understand this prophetic word in all of its aspects. For greater is he that prophesied than just one who speaks with a tongues. This one who speaks Amharic or Ethiopic if they cannot interpret. It says, except he interpret that the church, so all this is for the benefit of the Mahibir, the Mahibir. All this is for the benefit of the church. Right? And that's verse 5. Did we touch on verse uh, 5? No, we didn't touch on verse 5. Bamarinya. So, uh, here we go right here. Do we have that all in view? Okay, it says, it says, Hu la chi hu. Hu la chi. Be le sa no chi. Be le sa no chi. Le te na garu. Le te na garu. E we de. E we de. E we de. Ne be re. Ne be re. Ne be re. Te ne bi te ne. Ten bi ten. Le te na garu. Le te na garu. G ne gin. Ka zi he. Ka zi. Ye lik. Ye lik. E we da le hu, e we da lo, e we da le hu, yes, but it said as e we da lo, but still if you say e we da le hu, as you practice, you will perfect. Practice makes perfect. If one says there's nothing perfect, that means they have not practiced. Ma khe be ru, ma khe be ru, ye ta ne tse, ye ta ne tse, ne de zende, or zenid, some say, ne g g ru ne ne g g ru ba ye te re gwe me ba ye te re gwe or te re gwe some say te re gom but this is a gwe ba ye te re gwe be le sa no che be le sa no che ka mi na ga ru you could have said you could have said Yenesetet, my bad. Kami na ger, kami na ger. Te ne bi te ne, te na bi te. Ye mi na ger, ye mi na ger. Ye be le ta le, ye be le ta. So the whole verse will be read. So that that'll be the first level once. The, the fidels are masters. So many say, well, I've mastered my fidels. I think I know my fidels. Well, if you can know your fidels, you should be able to be, be able to do this when you test it. Even if you, uh, even if the word and the bob, you know, the, the flow, you haven't developed the flow as of yet, this is the first stage. You know, so showing the brothers and sisters at each stage how to learn and how to grow as well as the spiritual resource of prayer and faith to accomplish this. Mm-hmm. That's not about worry and fret and, you know, feeling bad and all this, or I don't have this. No, you have to, you have to banish that. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, that's the enemies. That's the enemies um, invading your, your spiritual, mental territory. So the, the, the word in the Bible, the more flow of it would be, Uhulachu ben lisano chalitinagaru e wed neber. Ten bi tena litinagaru gen. Kazi yelik a wadalo. Mahibaru yitanets zen. Nigigurun by Taraguam, Belisano chikaminagar. Tin di tin, yeminagar yebelital. Right? And that's the verse 5 that we had gone over. And let's bring up blue again. Let's bring up blue. What can blue do for you? You understand? Know There's a lot. You know, so we go on now, and we're at verse 6. So let's try to get a little more lively pace and see if we can get through this right here, because it's very important, because this gives us a, a, a reference for how the church, how the gathering, you understand, know, is to gather. And each of us who gather together should know this. You understand? Know, so it says, now, verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Now, when the moch, now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? If I come and I speak um, the royal Amharic, 
without interpreting anything, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation, by the the Rai or the Megalet, you understand? Um, or by knowledge, or by knowledge, mm -hmm. or by prophesying, or by doctrine. Now take this down. One, two, three, four. By revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by doctrine. So there's no profit, there's no benefit. You understand? There's no benefit to it. it, it I'm speaking to God. You understand? Unless I, unless I interpret, and that it helps you also to learn and to know so you can speak to God. Uh, verse 6 says, Ahun gin, when the mo choi, wode nante metiche, be lesano cha binaga, be meglet, woin be uket, woin be tinbit, woin be timeherit, kal neger choachu, min it it ek machuhalo, min it ek machuhalo. In other words, what will it benefit you? You know what I'm saying? What will be the, the, um, um, uh, Tekken? Huh? The use, the use. Very good, the use. What will be the use of it? You, you're not able to use it. You'd be like, yeah, he can do that, he can do that, but, but I'm not building you up. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to build one another up. You know what I'm saying? Not just break one another down. We spend a lot of time breaking each other down, breaking it down, break it down, another break it down, break it down, break it down. So you're destructors, you know what I'm saying? But not, Constructors, not builders, right? John is calling for the builders. Africa awaits her creators, right? That's what the King of Kings opposite said. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, whether a pipe or harp that doesn't have life but it gives a sound, except they give a distinction in the sounds. Unless a pipe or a harp give a distinction, in, now a lot of you are musicians. We could almost say this is a, could be a message to the singers and players of instruments, but a message out of this can be taken for the singers and players of instruments. They can understand this because also they have to understand the language because they have the king's music, the roots and the reggae, but they need the king's language to fulfill that word of speaking and singing in the new song. And they have a new song, right? It says, and even things without life that give sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? You know, those musicians know that. I've, I've, I've jammed for a lot of different musicians, and sometimes they will argue among themselves, like, no, that's not this key, that's not that key, and, and ones who know will come in, play it on the piano or whatnot like that, and get the right key for it. So we have that diligence in our music. How much more in our faith? Kut er sabat mess. Ye lay le bet neger in qua, um, or shintim, uh, kra, krarin, bihon, pipe or harp, right? Dint, the b, c set, dint, c set, ye dint on, liunet, by a gallet, be a shint, ye me nefau, waste. Be krar yemi metal mezmur indate yitawakal indate yitawakal. How shall the mezmur? You know, it's about the mezmur, the psalm, the chant, the witness. You understand? Know How shall it be known? So the the washint is 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 um is blown. It's the 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 the, the, the pipe, right? And then you have the krar. Which is yemi metal, yemi metal with, which is beat. You know what I'm saying? You can look up the kra and the washint, and we have a new book that have um, what is it? The Visual Bible Dictionary that contains a lot of this with both words. So you can look up that for some of the instruments and the names of things bamarinya, right? Or in the Amharic. But what's interesting here is that bamarinya is clearer in the revised Amharic Bible and in the Rav. It's clear, it says, um, Nes, ye leyle bet negarin kwa, even things, right, that lack in it, Nes, soul, even things that lack soul. In other words, a pipe or a harp or a guitar, it lacks soul. 
you know, a keyboard that it doesn't have no soul. You got the soul. Mm-hmm. Unless you sold your soul for rock and roll, you got the soul. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's a little different translation, a little more detail. We have a little more divine detail. So we just gave you a little interpretation there, right? So it says, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? You know, like those old those army movies? Dun, 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 you know, they, they're like, what's going on? That's like in the comedy portions of the movie, right? So likewise, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? If I just read at like a, a pace that maybe um, impresses native speakers, that's not going to help my brothers and sisters very much. For ye shall speak into the ear. You're talking, but, you know, like, yeah, wow, he knows that, well, whatever. You know, and they're going to just go about their own business, right? There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. We all have a distinct voice, and none of them is about signification. Now, I can preach on this and proclaim on this to you, and hopefully it will strengthen you, that each of our voice, each of our testimony is important. Because there's so many kinds of voices in the world, but none of them is, none of them is without signification. So each voice has signification or significance. You, you, you have to recognize and receive this. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be to him that speaketh a barbarian. Or he that speaketh shall be a barbarian to me. Now, barbarian is interesting because this it sounds harsh right here, a barbarian, right? But actually, if we look at Kuta uh, Asara And, if we look at verse 11, let's see if we go to verse 11. We, we, we skipped over a couple of verses here, but we can go through verse by verse. It says, In Gedi, Yekwana Kwawin Sitch, Balawik. Yeminagaro in Gada and Honalo, Yeminagaruum, Yeminagaruum, Lene in Gada, Yehonal. It says in Gada, it's a stranger, a foreigner. That's how they were used for foreigner, not barbarian, because barbarian implies that the foreigners at that time were those who wore beards, those who had hair, barber, you know, barber. You go to a barber, because the barber cuts the hair. You know what I'm saying? Now, verse 12 says, even, even so ye, y'all. For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, all you want to get spiritual gifts, heretical gifts, because we have spirituality of his majesty. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church, that whatever gift you have, make sure that it helps to build up the machibir of those who are coming as one together, two or three who are gathering together, all those who gather together whose spirit, soul, and body gather together with Christ as the center, Christ in kingly character, that it may build them up. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So ones who speak in unknown tongues pray that they may interpret. Many Ethiopians speak in hard, but they can't really interpret because they don't know the English as well or as fluently, right? So, but he, so pray. You understand? This is study and show yourself approved, but pray. Seek that spiritual resource first. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Right? So my spirit is praying, but my understanding. So what is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. That means to be complete. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou bless with the spirit, when we say bless up, bless, baruch, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen? That's when you say bless, people say, yeah, bless. Bless you, bless up, bless up, bless up. No, you're supposed to say amen. That means someone might have blessed you, but you can't receive it because you have not said amen. Because you're in, the, you're in the room, you occupy the room of the unlearned. How can you say amen at thy giving of thanks, at, at your muskana? How can you say amen at your giving of muskana? Seeing he understandeth, he don't understand what thou sayest. He don't understand what thou sayest. For thou verily givest thanks well. You probably given thanks to speaking it well and giving it well in, in spirit, soul, and, and body and the expression, the voice. But the other is not edified. The other is not built up. I thank my God. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. 
I speak with tongues more than all, more than y'all, more than y'all all. Yet in the church, remember the five words, Besimma, Ab, Wewelit, Wemenfes, Kedus, those five, people say, how do I unlock, because tradition has taught you to say that. But really the five words Christ gives us is Besimma, Ab, Wewelit, Wemenfes, Kedus, those five words. Yet in the Beta Christian, right, or the church, the Mahibar, I'd rather speak five words with my overstanding, my understanding, than by my voice, that my voice, that by my voice, I might teach others also. So I'm using my voice to teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, than putting up uh, just, just I and I chanting the Amharic and chanting all through it, and okay, I'm, I'm giving praise, I'm speaking to God, but your understanding is not built up. You know what I'm saying? Your understanding, your overstanding is not built up. Let's see if we can get through this. If not, we'll pick it up in the next part. Verse 20, brethren, be not children in understanding, how be it, in malice be ye children. You know what I'm saying? In the negativity, be like children. When children get upset, they forget it, they move on. You know what I'm saying? Or in true nature of children. But in understanding, be men, be mind, be, be mature. In the law or Torah, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak to this people. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, saith Adoni, saith Adonai. He says, Adonai says he will speak with other tongues. And other lips, he'll speak to this people. Yet for all that, will they not hear me, saith Adonai, saith Geta. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign. So speaking in tongues, that's a sign. Not to them that my men are believed or have faith, right? But to them that don't have faith. But prophesying service, right? Not for them that believe not. You see, that's when we start prophesying. Some people say, I don't get that. I don't, that way, you know, people always say the Bible. They don't, they don't, my men. But it's for them that my men, that have our men, for Ras Taman, Taman, Yetamene, for the faithful. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, this is what we say, we need to gather, right? But if we be come together in one place, we need to know this first. And all speak with tongues, and all have been studying and practicing, passing the Barbet. And there come in those that are unlearned. You know, those other Negroes, blacks, colored, Gentiles, so forth and so on, they come in. Or unbelievers, or ones that don't check for it, right? Will they not say that ye are mad? Because we were speaking about Marine. So these niggas, what, what, what they're talking? Uh, are they possessed? I mean, what, what, what's up with them? But it says, if all prophesy. And we now show them prophetically the word. And they come in one that doesn't accept it as true, right? Or one that is unlearned. He is convinced of all. He is judged of all. Because you have to go back out in the world and see those signs. You have to see it happen. You understand? Know and that's what's going to show and that's what's going to convince him. Right? Verse 25. And thus are the secrets of the heart, of his heart, made manifest. Right? Now I know it's the secrets of his heart now made manifest by prophecy. And so falling down on his face, he will worship or worship Jah, worship God, and report that God is in you of a truth. This also connects to the same prophetic word from the Nabiat, the Nabim right here. Right? Where they'll grab hold on the, on the tassel of, of, of a Hebrew's garment, of a Jew's garment, of a Ihud, a Yehudi's garment. And say for sure God is in you. This is about the merchandise of Ethiopia. That, check that part out. Right? He says, How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done to building up, to the building up. It's like on the Facebook. Everybody, you know, they post something, maybe it's a psalm, a song, or, or like a poetry. Maybe they have a doctrine, something from his majesty's teaching, perhaps. Or they have a tongue, or they put some of the Amharic, or some language up there, even in another tongue. You understand, a European tongue. That has a revelation, something that they want to reveal to one. Or has an interpretation, giving one either a strict 
Torah, scriptural interpretation of the language, or interpreting what something means and, and should mean. But it says, that's good. But all of it should be done to what? To edifying, to the building up. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or by the most three. You see that two or three, which we wanted to show you, that two or three, even those who go to Aliyah, the, the, the going up to read the Torah, in the Mikurad, in the, the gathering, in the assembly, the Mahibur, in the church, in the society, in the society houses, and that by course, by each by course, each in his turn, and no bum rush, you know what I'm saying? And let one interpret, then one now will interpret. So the different readers would read the, the, the royal and hard portion, and one would interpret. But if there be no interpreter in that church, in that local community, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let him speak to himself and to God because he speaks the language of God. Let the prophet speak two or three. And let the other judge, let the other judge what's being said, and in, in, in words, interpret, make that judgment on it. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. So if one is, re you know, like in, in Ayabingi, we say one sound, one sound, one sound, one voice, one sound. In other words, because two or three people start talking, like, one sound, one voice. That's based on this principle in 1 Corinthians 14.30 right here. Because based on the principle of the synagogue, the original Judaic church, if anything be revealed to another that sitteth, yeshev, yeshiva, that sits by, let, it, let the first hold his salam, his peace. For ye, ye may all prophesy one by one, each according to his turn, that all may learn. And all may be comforted, though you have everybody reasoning and arguing and shouting and name calling. That's that, that, that's not Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a byway. That's a stray. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And for God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. He's the author of Tawahida. You know what I'm saying? Which we learn from studying the Met of Kedus. But of peace, of salam, of shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, as in all churches of the Kedusan. See, there's a lot of churches out there, but they're not churches of the Kedusan. Because those don't even know what Kedus is, what being Isla or holy is. You know what I'm saying? It says, let your woman keep silence in the churches. Now, we're going to have to go into that because a lot of folks have been dispolarized, like, oh, this is sexist. No, it's also talking about the feminine. You know, in other words, let me just say it plainly, the niggas who will be bitches, you know, like they're not in that discipline, of it. they're not expressing that nobility, that, that discipline, you understand, or, or, or they be making faces and acting up, you know, let them keep silent, you understand, let them keep silent, so, so to be part of the feminine here, I'm not saying the homosexual, we're saying the feminine, those who are not on John's standard, they, you know, they, man up, man up, you understand, let your woman, and also the physical woman, but it's not only talking about the physical woman here, but it is an order for the sisters. Because a lot of them are coming out of the world, coming out of the ship joint, coming out of doing a lot of crazy stuff out in the world that Yeshua is saving them from that. So now they have to humble, they have to ground themselves. So let the woman keep silence in the machibah, or keep quiet, actually. You know what I'm saying? Keep con contained. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that spirit of the mother... You understand that spirit of the Holy Mother can abide in them. You understand? For it is not permitted to them to speak. Because the man has to man up. The man has to do their part. And so pushing the woman them forward. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. So some say, wait. But then Paul do away with the law. Then Jesus do away with the law. No, he's saying, as also saith the law. The law is taught up. Yeah, so I don't know where you got that from, according to some people, right? And if they will learn anything, right, if, the, if they will learn anything, the cistern, the, the ones who are a little bit effeminate on Jah's level of manhood, you know what I'm saying, let them ask their husbands at home. So the husbands have to learn, because so a woman should come home and ask them. Let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church, now, of course, I'm going to look at that and say, oh, that's what's going on now. We don't agree with that. But we have to understand the context of it. And we don't have the opportunity to get into the context 
the, 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 the more detailed context right now, but the idea that this is speaking to the feminine, right, which is the feminine, we're saying that to those men who are following the woman around. You know what I'm saying? You have to remember how to make a slave. Look at how to make a slave. You know what I'm saying? So, so whenever they have done this, the devil, he always reverses the roles right here. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's that the woman don't have no rights. It says that the, that the fall of Eve, Haywan, is because of Adam. Don't you get it? He wasn't doing his job. He wasn't on point. He put the woman on the point. He's supposed to be on the point. You know what I'm saying? That when a woman now has to step forward, it's a, it's a shame really for the men, but it's a shame on them you understand that they have to now get out of their proper God-given position in righteousness, right? What? What came the word of God out from you? Or came it to you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet, that's what one say, I and I is a prophet or, or that. And I say, well, you know, um, I and I is a, a son of a son of John. You know what I'm saying? Son of a uh, son of His Majesty in Christ, you know, and we do have the gift of, of prophecy. But understand this: whether you think I or you think yourself a prophet or whatever, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Let him acknowledge. He got to act on this knowledge that the things that I write to you are the commandments of Adonai, are the commandments of the Lord. And we're saying Adonai, and the Lord is Yeshua. The king is Kedamawi Haila Shalase. The father, Abba Kedus, the son, Geetachini Yesus Christus. Don't get that confused. That's why his majesty's official title does not have Lord of Lords. I, I, oh, we always in the synthesis of the, of the, the, the revelation, because the father is in the son, and the son is in the father on that spiritual level, that eschatological level. You know what I'm saying? But rightfully, you know what I'm saying? The Lord of Lords is Yeshua, the Father and the Son, the Son and the Father. You understand? But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. You know, because basically, you know, it's speaking to niggas. You know, it's speaking to our our kind of people. Because some niggas will be ignorant. Yeah, I've been rock star this time, and well, I, uh, let him be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Let, if he won't be ignorant, let him be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Wherefore, brethren, covet. Covet, you know, like, coveting usually is a, a bad thing. Coveting, you know, coveting. Coveting what belongs to somebody else. But this belongs to all of us. So it says right here, it says right here, it says that we should covet, right? It says covet to prophesy, to covet, to have a, a longing, a, a desire. You know what I'm saying? A desire, a urge, a strong desire to prophesy. And forbid not to speak with tongues. And forbid ones not to practice the royal and hard, the ha hu he ha he he ho, and even in the in the in, in, in the Nabar bait and in the basic reading, even if their reading is not strong, we all children growing up and each one teach one and help one. You know what I'm saying? Just say through Yeshua that we, you can tell who are my um, disciples by how much love they have one for another. That's that's the key right there whether they allow the Holy Spirit, whether they open when Yeshua knocks upon the door of their conscience, their heart, or whether they slam it to Yeshua, yes, it's Christian, and say, oh, you're not God. You know what I'm saying? Some, some kind of nonsense like that, some Arius philosophy, which was burnt out by the 318 Orthodox Fathers. You know what I'm saying? As Matthew upheld that foundation, that's groundation. All right? That's ground zero. All right? So, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Verse 40, to complete this chapter, let all things, how many things? Some things? No, all things. Say all things be done decently and in order. That's a very powerful word right there. Let all things be done how? It says let all things be done decently and in order. You know what I'm saying? And the order is the shar'at. And what's interesting about the Shur'at, and this kind of brings I and I full circle in this, in this um, Sabbath day, um, uh, 45th Sabbath for 2012, um, reasoning and update, and, and it's a Tinnish Devar, you know, the Devar, Devarim, it's a Tinnish Devar speaking the Torah, but it's really speaking to the foundation in order to put I and I who 
education, awareness, and background having prepared I and I for this time, but it is the grace of the King of Kings in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in the Negush, the Negush Mashiach, which, which provides us all that we need, regardless of whatever situation that we're in. We, we have to, first of all, trust that. There has to be just a basic, no doubt, no doubt about that. No doubt about the King of Kings and, and His grace in Yeshua HaMoshiach. And we must recognize that grace that is in Yeshua HaMoshiach, and His Majesty testifies and bears witness to that. You know, since, so let's just deal with that verse. Um, okay, let's deal with that verse. Uh, verse uh, let's see, stop this script right here. All right. Uh, I'll get on that, Connie. You know, uh, don't touch I and I. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you know, we're in this world of a bunch of spirits and all, so we we stay in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit overcome all those false spirits. You know what I'm saying? But we have to build up on the Word, because the Word is like our is like that last will and testament. You see, and in that last will and testament, is contained, um, you know, our our blessing. You know what I'm saying? Our rights, our duties. You know, it, it contains all that we inherit. You know what I'm saying? All that we inherit in spirit and in truth. So you can see right here, went to the Facebook. We're gonna put this up on the Facebook. Um, hopefully, very, you know, saying very um, soon, right? Okay. We see the oh, we see this guy right here with Omar Tabija. You know, saying the other two friends must have left some sort of a statement here. Let's see if we can clear this. Though we don't want to get on that aspect on the Sabbath, we keep our and I sabbatical peace. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that still does not mean preclude us from dealing with issues that concern the foundation. You know, because you're not speaking the language of God. You know what I'm saying? The language of Jah. You know, um, and really studying and and following his, his Matthew's teachings. His Matthew teaches himself. You know what I'm saying? And who do you think he was speaking to? You know what I'm saying? He was speaking to Ethiopians at home. And he was speaking to the Ethiopians abroad. So let's see if we can, uh, okay, close this script right here. Uh, we'll get a nekanim seat on hoy. Vayesus crystals them, seminar them. You know, gotta, gotta touch back these these negative spirits. Because the spirits that are involved, one of you think like, oh, why is this going on? You know what I'm saying? You have to declare, you know what I'm saying? That, that it's a fire and blood tribe. Everyone who is truly no Rastafari is a fire and blood. And, you know, old time it said fire and blood because they recognize Christ in his kingly character. They just didn't recognize um, boisterous white supremacy and the fornication and the confusion. Okay, this is the same statement that this one I think made before. If we can just clear this right here. Same statement. Um, they said, House Life is now 120, so now what? Are people still waiting for him to return? Stop making the Lord into an idol. This is the same thing that the Pope teaches. What are you talking about? You better, you better get out of here with this. You know, um, nothing at all, so forth and so on. This is like a prepared speech right here. You know what I'm saying? This is a prepared speech. The flesh profits nothing. Well, it's interesting because he says God is not invisible. You know, he's so sort of spirit, you know. And he says Jesus is not God, and, and that contradicts. The Tawahido or the Tuahimanot right here. And, and there's one who had the same sort of philosophy, and that was um, the heretic. In the Ethiopian, we had Ethiopians call that way of thinking a heretical, heretical. You know what I'm saying? It's heretical when you know what the true teachings is, when you go to word. You know what I'm saying? When you go to source. You know what I'm saying? We're going to source code right here. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, you know, make that you make that be so. But if one declares his majesty is God, then you know, in spirit and in truth, well, that's good. But then you have to recognize you have to do the things that God says. You understand? Know and and all these things that we remind, not just you all, but remind I and I self concerning, is what the King of Kings clearly says, and there and there are numerous witnesses. You know, saying and we're pointing out the witnesses and saying, well, this is what. The Holy Spirit shows I and I. So reason with I and I. Just like it's saying right here in this 14th chapter, right, of First Corinthians. You know, so that statement was posted up again, but that's just that's just some 
you know, a can rattling right there. You understand? Because already there's other things that one has said that, you know, the spirit of truth will not say that because His Majesty says opposite to what these ones say. So we know that that is not the uh, um, spirit of truth, you understand, that is saying that. So I think this thing right here, this, this, this uh, page, this page here went off. So we're probably going to conclude this right here and probably come again, you understand, come again with this teaching at this particular point. But remember the last verse here in 1440 down here where it says, um, let all things, right, let all things be done decently. Where it says, let all things be done decently and in order. So, let all things be done decently and in order. There is a particular order. And that word for order, we want to show you on the Haile Selassie First uh, Bible page on the Internet. We want to show you the word for order. You understand the word that it used there for order. And um, we're pretty confident it is uh, Shabbat, because we, we taught on this. And Shabbat is, is this Torah portion. You understand, is, is this, this reading, this sabbatical reading, sabbatical feeding. You know what I'm saying? This is how we grow. This is how when we come together. This is really how church, you know what I'm saying? This is the real, the original kadase, you can say, for the church. That does not make the other kadases not kadase. But when we're coming from the um, Judeo-Christian foundation and um, groundation. So here's where we're at right, right now. Lamenahu. And I beseeched and I, and I begged and I pleaded. You know what I'm saying? And this is um, concerning the Torah portion for the 45th Sabbath. And you can download this. We want to back it out right here so you can see the, so you can see the cover of this. This is, this is what the, the Shur'at or the Sur'at. In the Hebrew, we'll call it the Seder. You understand? In the Hebrew, we'll call it the Seder right here. Right, so this is this is you can download this Sabbath house reading. So when um, Hawadia Hawadia Paulos Paul, formerly known as uh, Shaul, he, when he said that let all things be done decently, you understand decently and and in in order, you understand saying things contrary to the basic Tawahedo foundation is not decent, you understand, it's indecent, you understand, it's not according to the order, you understand, so we want to keep the order, and then we'll deal with these and those, but then we, we, get, we gain great strength from studying our, our history, our culture, uh, our divine heritage, because we see that others went through these same sort of controversies, and that's controversies for the English speakers, y'all in America in the English speaking con uh, controversy but controversies with these and those who are putting forward um, diverse you know diverse doctrine doctrine that's diverse from the teaching of Nagus and the guests from the teaching of Edomawi Haile Selassie uh, the teaching of Abba Kedus you understand the teachings of Abba Kedus and it does matter that Abba Kedus his Imperial Majesty is 120. It does matter. This is the 120th year of Lich Tefari. It, it does matter. You understand? It's, this is why we're showing you that these and those are faulty. We still are seeking to love them for Christ's sake. You understand? And even our ability to approach this in the spirit of Christ. Because normally, you know, I and I, you know, such, such, when, we, when you know the truth and then somebody's coming like, you know, um, jumping from pillar to post, and everything, and they're not really focusing on the real groundation. You know, in, in the flesh, you might lose your cool. You understand? So we, we know that we're growing in the walk of the King of Kings, because the King of Kings teaching that it, even when one say things contrary, things that, that they don't even know what they are saying, you understand, to, to the, the, the doctrine of Christ, you understand, which is the Tawahedo doctrine, which is the, the two are hymenos. And when we say the orthodox, we're not speaking orthodox according to a particular church or a particular building. We're saying according to the teachings. You know, then give us the teachings 
of his majesty. Because we don't want no devil's philosophy, no other ways of uh, logicalizing it or intellectualizing it. And it's very clear that Father Abba, the one whom you call God, that he saith such and such things, but you, how be it that you say contrary, contrary things. You understand? So may God and I watch and pray, my brothers and sisters, and um, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This is your Wendem Yadon. This is Aras Yadinos Tefari of the LOJ Society. So you can uh, check us out here on the Facebook. You understand? Those who don't know about the Facebook uh, page, the Facebook, we'll probably have to restart this. We've been at it a while. This is AOL, as you probably know. But the Facebook page, we wanted to go back to that page, but the machine is acting a little bit, um, a little bit, a little bit, you know, cuckoo a little bit loco, a little bit house, a little bit crazy. All right, so shalom, ras, tefari.